In this video, we're going to learn about cumulative frequency diagrams. Let's have a look at a regular frequency table, so one like this. This one is about the test marks that some students have scored in a test. In an exam, it's really common for them to ask you to complete a cumulative frequency table. For a cumulative frequency table, the first entry will always be the same as the regular frequency table. If we look at the first entry in the regular frequency table, we can see it's from 0 to 20 marks with a frequency of 6. So we can just copy this over into the cumulative frequency table as well, from 0 to 20 marks with a frequency of 6. But here's where it changes. So we're now going to look at the next entry, so marks from 20 to 40, with a frequency of 22. But because this frequency is cumulative, we're going to include all of the previous frequencies as well. This means we want to include all of the people from the first group and all of the people from the second group. If we're going to get all of those people, then we need the marks that are from 0 to 40 now. So for our next entry, the test mark goes from 0 to 40, and we need to add together both of those frequencies. Or we could just add on 22 to the last one, which was 6. So 6 plus 22 gives a cumulative frequency of 28. Now if we move on to the third entry, we want to include this group from 40 to 60, but also both of the previous two groups. So if we're going to get all of those people, the marks must now go from 0 to 60. And then we need to add together all of the previous frequencies as well, so we need the 6 plus the 22 plus the 36. To do this quickly, we could just add the new frequency 36 onto our previous total. So 28 plus 36 gives you a cumulative frequency of 64. We then just repeat this process all the way to the end of the table. So for the next group from 60 to 80 with a frequency of 45, our test mark now needs to go from 0 all the way up to 80, and we can just add on this new frequency of 45. 64 plus 45 is 109. And for the final group from 80 to 100, the test mark now needs to go from 0 all the way up to 100. So we're now going to get all of the people. We can add on this new frequency of 11. 109 plus 11 is 120. So this is the completed cumulative frequency table. You'll then almost certainly be asked to use this information to draw a cumulative frequency diagram. So let's take some axes, and we're going to put the test marks along the bottom. So they need to go from 0 to 100, and we can label that as test mark. Then we need to do the cumulative frequency, and this always goes on the vertical axis. You can see the cumulative frequency goes up to 120, so we need to make sure we go up to at least 120. And we'll label this cumulative frequency. Now we need to mark on some points for each of the entries in the cumulative frequency table. So looking at the first entry here from 0 to 20, it has a cumulative frequency of 6. We need to plot this in a very particular place though. Since this entry is saying that up to the point of 20 marks we have 6 people, we're going to plot this at the end point of that interval. So at 20, we're going to plot a cumulative frequency of 6. And you always do this for cumulative frequency, you always plot at the end point of each of the intervals. So we go along the bottom to the test mark of 20, and plot a cumulative frequency of 6, which would be somewhere like this. Then we move on to the next group, from 0 to 40, with a cumulative frequency of 28. This 28 tells us there are 28 people who got up to 40 marks. So at the end of that interval 40, we're going to plot a cumulative frequency of 28. So we go to 40 and 28 and put a cross there. We then continue this with the next group. So an endpoint of 60 with a cumulative frequency of 64, that goes here. And the next one, an endpoint of 80 with a cumulative frequency of 109, that goes here. And for the final group, a test mark of 100 with a cumulative frequency of 120, and that goes here. There's one extra cross that we ought to put on as well. If we look at the regular frequency table, we can see the lowest point of the first interval is this number here. And since nobody's scoring below zero in this test, we can be sure the cumulative frequency up to the point of zero is zero. So we can put a cross at zero, zero as well. Just be wary that that first group won't always start at zero. But whatever value is there is where you can plot a cumulative frequency of zero. We then join these crosses together, you have a choice at this point, you could use straight lines, so connect them up from left to right like this, with a straight line going from one cross to the next. Or alternatively you could do the same thing, but use a smooth curve, something that looks like this. Both methods will get you all of the marks in the exam. I would personally recommend sticking with straight lines, just because I think it's easier to do. So this is a completed cumulative frequency diagram, let's just review how we made it. Well first of all we worked out the cumulative frequencies by adding on the previous frequency each time. Then we scaled the axes, making sure the cumulative frequency was on the vertical axis. Then we plotted all of the points, making sure to plot each cumulative frequency at the end of each of the intervals. And finally, we connected them up using a straight line or a smooth curve.
Sometimes you may be given a cumulative frequency diagram that's already been drawn, like this one here, and then you'll be asked some questions about it. Let's run through some of the types of questions you could be asked about it. This diagram is about some students who were late to school, and you can see we've recorded the number of minutes that they were late. The first thing that they could ask you about a diagram like this is to calculate the median, so we're going to work out the median number of minutes late. To answer this, we first of all need to work out what the total cumulative frequency is. To find this, you look for the highest point on the graph, so that's this one here, and then just read across left at the cumulative frequency value, and you can see this one is 40. This means that in total there are 40 students in this diagram that were late to school. If the total frequency is 40, but we're after the median, we want the one that's in the middle. This will be halfway up the cumulative frequency. Half of 40 is 20, so what we need to do is go up to 20 on the cumulative frequency axis. Then we draw a horizontal line from this value of 20 until we hit the cumulative frequency curve, and then go down to the bottom and read off the number of minutes late. So for this one I read off the value of 6.5, so the median number of minutes late was 6.5. The next thing they could ask you is to calculate the interquartile range. To do this we need both the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Let's start with the lower quartile. So the lower quartile is one quarter of the way through the data. If the total cumulative frequency is 40, we can find the lower quartile at one quarter of 40, which is 10. So we need to go up to 10 on the cumulative frequency. We then read across from 10 until we hit the curve, and then come down and read off the number of minutes. So the lower quartile here comes in at 2 minutes. Now we'll do the upper quartile. This is 3 quarters of the way through the data. So since there are 40 in total for the cumulative frequency, 3 quarters of 40 is 30. So if we go up to 30, then go across, once we hit the curve we go down, and we can read off this value. So the upper quartile is 25 minutes. Then to find the interquartile range, you do the upper quartile subtract the lower quartile. So the interquartile range is 25 minutes, take away 2 minutes, which is 23 minutes. Both of these are really common follow-up questions to cumulative frequency diagrams. Now let's do one more. So this time we're told that students who are more than 5 minutes late are going to receive a detention. And we need to work out the percentage of the students who received the detention. This time, rather than starting with a cumulative frequency and working out a time, we're given a time and we're going to work out the frequency. So in the question it mentions students that are more than 5 minutes late receive a detention. So if we locate 5 minutes late on the bottom axis, that's here, and then go up to the curve, and then across, we can read off a cumulative frequency of 18. This means we would estimate that there are 18 students whose lateness was below 5 minutes, therefore they're not going to get a detention. But we want the students that are above 5 minutes because they are getting a detention. Since there are 40 students in total and we know there are 18 below 5 minutes, we can do 40 take away 18 and get 22. So we would estimate that there are 22 students above 5 minutes, therefore 22 students are going to receive a detention. This question doesn't say how many students though, it says what percentage. So let's first of all write this 22 as a fraction of all of the students, so there are 22 receiving a detention, out of a total of 40 students, and to turn this into a percentage we multiply by 100. If you work this out or type it into your calculator, you'll get the answer 55%. Now let's try another example. So this time we have a diagram about the time spent waiting for a meal at a restaurant, and this is in minutes. First of all we're going to work out the median again. To work out the median we first of all need to work out what the total cumulative frequency is. So we find the highest point on the diagram, read across to the left, and you can see this is 80. On this type of question you need to be particularly careful. The scale goes up to 100, but the cumulative frequency only goes up to 80. So some students mistakenly think the maximum cumulative frequency is 100, but it's not, it's 80 in this question. Now we need to locate the median. So if the total cumulative frequency was 80, we need to go up half of this, which is 40. We then go across to the cumulative frequency curve, and then go down and read off this value. I think this value is about 46, so the median would be 46 minutes. Now we're going to practice the interquartile range once again, so we'll do the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Let's start with the lower quartile. If the total cumulative frequency was 80, we need to go up one quarter of this. One quarter of 80 is 20. Go across and read down, and we can read this lower quartile at 34 minutes. Now we'll do the upper quartile, so this is three quarters of the cumulative frequency, so three quarters of 80 is 60. So we go across from 60, and then down, and read off this value, and this time it's 55 minutes. 
Then to find the interquartile range, we do the upper quartile 55, subtract the lower quartile 34, and this gives you the answer 21 minutes. And for one final question, one person from the restaurant is selected at random, and we've been asked to work out the probability the person waited between 50 and 70 minutes. Once again, this is a question where we're given the time and we need to work out the cumulative frequency. So let's do this for 50 and 70. So let's start at 50 on the time axis, go up to the diagram, and then across, and 50 corresponds to a cumulative frequency of 49. This means that 49 people waited up to 50 minutes. Now let's do the same for 70, so up to the curve, and then across, and we read off 77. So 77 people waited for up to 70 minutes. Now we've been asked to work out the number of people waiting between 50 and 70 minutes. Well, if we know there were 49 up to 50, and then 77 up to 70, we can just subtract these to work out the number in between. So if we do 77 take away 49, we end up with 28 people. So we would estimate there are 28 people between 50 and 70 minutes, and we need to give this one as a probability. So we need to give that as a fraction of the total. There were 80 in total, so the answer is going to be 28 over 80. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and now go and try the exam questions in the video's description.